In his first interview since issuing that apology and being kicked off the show, Joey Guccamelli joins us from New York City. And Joey, you're not in your attire. Your drag costume is Sherry Pie. This is how you present yourself every day. Um, I'm sure you've seen a lot of the comments already. And I just want to launch in with the fact that there are up to about a dozen people now who've gone on record who have made similar allegations that you don't deny. After this interview, do you anticipate that there could be more people who come forward with credible information that you did this to them to beyond those who've come forward? Um, well, thank you for having me, uh, first of all. I just uh, first want to say, um, there are no allegations, you know. I've admit to my wrongdoings and my um, just beyond wrongdoings, just horrible behavior. And um, I don't know if after I do this interview, if more will come forward. I I'm here to just apologize. And I want to make that very clear, that I understand now, in um, in lieu of this year, how much pain I've caused. And some of these people, I wish I had their relationships in through COVID and through all of this. But I just want to let the victims know, and everyone else know that I am so sorry and I can't even begin to imagine the pain and the trauma that I have caused and that's really all I have to yeah, say and, is that and I, I think you, I, you've I, apologized before and I, and I thought about this a lot last night and there was a quote that came up in an interview an article on Esquire magazine and someone said about the victim pain, victim's pain, which is obviously the most important thing, but the pain you caused the community. And it said that what you did, basically you fed into the scrutiny that the LGBTQ plus endure every day. And so much of the yeah. criticism and, uh, and the prejudice and the scrutiny you played into with this behavior. Something I've never said on air before. I was a seven-year-old child. I watched someone I love very dearly, beaten in front of me. He was dressed as a woman, and the man he was out with felt he tricked him and was prepared to take his life. What you've done, as you know, can't just be words. It has to be deeds. No, it has to, yeah. What have yeah, you done in this year that you've, you've taken to reflect on this? Um, well, I this year has been a long year for a lot of us, but... Um, I've been really deep in therapy. I've been doing cognitive behavioral therapy, which I started kind of right after this, right. but I um, also uh, have seen psychiatrists um, and seeing my therapist when this all kind of went down or happened. Um, I, start, I was already seeing somebody, yeah. but and I, I, and I really I want to talk started... to you about that, but I think that because we have to take a beat and, and recognize those are things totally, to fix 100%. you. But what yeah. are you doing for the community? And yes, you have to fix yourself before I, you can help somebody else. But those yeah. are things to fix you. Yeah. I've, I have reached out to, um, I've spoken to three of the victims. Um, and I have you know, spoken to them. Two of them I still kind of speak to. Um, one of them asked me no longer to contact them, and I totally understand that. Are you I'm worried not... about criminal charges, Sher Joey? Because here's the deal, and we've done a lot of research. The catfish laws, if you will, are very loose out there, but there are allegations of financial fraud. Um, there are allegations that in the hands of certain prosecutors could end up with either civil or potentially criminal investigations. Are you prepared for that? I'm prepared to take any responsibility. Listen, I didn't, I 
when everything kind of happened, I'm not here to hide. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be somebody who was accused of something and who just kept denying, denying, denying. This wasn't something that I um, deep down felt good about doing. One of the victims um, said that you now get this platform, but that you're not fully owning the gravity and the impact of your actions. Um, some of the things to go through, for example, that you, you created this persona, this Allison Mossy, as the casting agent. You had them do things that were embarrassing, humiliating. You have said that this wasn't about sexual gratification. What else could it have been? What could have been the motivation to do that to people? It was about control and the fear and fear. I mean, these aren't cookie cutter situations, you know what I mean? To give a a blanket statement is just not really acceptable. The biggest blanket statement is that obviously, like, I I am so sorry. Yeah. That is the only blanket statement. But I would say most of these things ended up happening because of my immense fear of losing these people. I had relationships with a lot of these people prior. Some of these people were acquaintances. You were in their social circle. Some even friends, yeah. were friends. Who would do that Very to their friends. friend? Who would do that to a friend? I know. <laughs> and I just didn't know what to do to not lose these people. I, uh, and that was my greatest fear. Um, you know, no one knows you like your friends. You had to know that this would be devastating to them, that it would. And, and by the way, the, the interviews have been given in great detail, mm -hmm. firsthand accounts from multiple people affected by this. I, I don't want people to think that I don't take full responsibility for the pain that I've caused these people, especially these amazing relationships that I wish that I could fix. And I understand that this isn't a situation of fixing. This isn't a situation, uh, you know, this isn't something that, uh, sorry, yeah. and it It doesn't go everything. away. You know why also, Joey? Because I, these are videos and photos. And when I was reading um, the descriptions from the victims, I thought, where are these photos? What did he do with these videos? How do they know that 10, 15 years down the road, these won't emerge, that they've been in your custody? They've, they've yeah, been on no, your computer. I don't yeah, I don't have anything. I have nothing. I didn't keep anything. I literally have nothing. This is at the brink of you having the dream of being known nationally. And instead, this character revealed who you really were in this behavior. Because had you not been on the show, maybe these stories would have been kept in a vault of the hearts of the people impacted, but it got out there. A lot of people who do bad things are sometimes aware that they're going to be caught. Did you know that you were about to be caught because your platform on the show would trigger some of this pain? Um, I don't think I thought of it like something like getting caught. To be honest, when these things would happen and they would last for oh, either a week or, you know, however long or longer, um, in some ways when it would round out, my brain would just compartmentalize that. So you tricked and yourself into believing in some ways that it didn't happen, which is a part of what you say you've been treated for regarding mm -hmm. your mental health. You know, Joey, with everyone, I always tell people, we can go to the end of their story or we can unpack some of the pages. And you say that through therapy and this past year, you have learned that you have a personality disorder. A multi is, it, is it a multiple personality disorder? 
It's called borderline personality disorder, BPD. And what so, is that? So, uh, what um, is that? It's it's kind of it's it manifests differently in each person, um, but mostly it's uh, the inability, not inability, but um, you go from feeling very highs to feeling incredibly low. There's an immense amount of fear that comes along with having um, BPD that comes kind of out. It doesn't come from nowhere, but does like, it stem from your childhood of... and your upbringing at all? Yeah, <laughs> yes. And I, uh, I don't blame. Okay, I want to make this clear, though. I don't blame my mental illness for anything. Oh, that we I weren't going to let you do that either, actions. because here's no, the deal: not everyone. Wait, let me be clear here. I'm asking because, as I said, it's an interview, and I'm a curious person. Yeah. We so. know that people with that condition and with mental health don't catfish their friends and do deplorable Correct. things. So that's not the yes. point. The point of the yes. question is, this is something that you've discovered about yourself and that mm -hmm. you believe may reveal some of the why here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I have a very rough relationship with men going all the way back to, I don't really know my father. He left before I have any real memories of him. I was just constantly told about him and his kind of deplorable, his own deplorable behavior. Um, and my stepfather and I do not have a good relationship and had not had a good relationship for many years. Um, I was raised by a lot of women <laughs> and um, I, I know that through my life, I have found comfort in certain men, not mm -hmm. sexually, right. um, but just a comfort. And whatever that is, I haven't gotten to that answer. Right. I continue, I wanna get to that answer. And again, this journey for me, I know is not like a turn on the light switch, it's over right. or whatever, you know, it's, this is a long journey for me and, I'm only kind of scratching the surface 